Fatima was a beautiful young woman from Syria. One day, she saw a big new shop in one of the streets in her hometown. On the front of the shop was a sign. It said, Women are clever, but men think faster. Who wrote that? She said angrily. Ali the shopkeeper, people told her. Fatima went into the shop. What a nice day, said Ali. <laughs> Not for me, answered Fatima, and she began to cry. <laughs> Ali was surprised. <laughs> Why not? Ali asked. What's the matter? Every time a man wants to marry me, my father always tells him, My daughter is cross eyed and has big, ugly feet. Is it true? She looked at Ali with her big, dark eyes. Your eyes are beautiful. Said Ali. What about my feet? She asked sadly. Ali looked at her feet. They're wonderful feet, he said. Who is your father? I must talk to him. My father is the judge, answered Fatima, the richest man in town. Don't cry any more, said Ali. I'm going to visit him tomorrow. Everything is going to change. But what about when he calls me cross eyed and talks about my big ugly feet? said Fatima. I'm ready for his stories, answered Ali. Fatima left the shop and went home. Ali couldn't sleep all night. Every time he closed his eyes, he saw Fatima's beautiful dark eyes. The next day, he got up early and walked quickly to the judge's house. The judge was very surprised when Ali asked to marry his daughter. Do you know about my daughter? He asked. She's cross eyed and has big, ugly feet. That doesn't matter to me, said Ali. But can you pay for her? asked the judge. You must pay ten thousand gold coins to marry her. That's nothing to me, said Ali. I have a big shop. Here's the money. So the judge said yes to the wedding. Later that day, a man came to Ali's door with a big basket. This basket is from the judge, said the man. It's her things, I'm sure, thought Ali. But when he opened the basket, there was an ugly young woman in it. She was cross eyed and had big, ugly feet. Who are you? asked Ali. I'm the judge's daughter, she answered. But I'm going to be your wife. Ali sat down suddenly next to the basket. So, who was the beautiful girl in my shop? He thought. He gave the ugly young woman something to eat and then went to his room. He didn't understand a thing. Thing. The next morning, 
he opened his shop at the usual time. He sat with his head in his hands. The door opened, and Fatima came in. Good morning. What a nice day, she said. This time, Ali cried. <sighs> Not for me, he said. Now I'm going to have an ugly wife. But I wanted to marry you. You're not the judge's daughter. No, my father is the blacksmith, said Fatima. Why are you doing this to me? asked Ali. Who thinks faster? asked Fatima. Men or women? Ali looked at Fatima. Ah, now I understand," he said. "The sign on the front of my shop." With that, Fatima left the shop and went home. The next day, Fatima walked past the shop and looked at the sign. Men think fast. But women are cleverer," she read. She went into the shop. "That's better," she said. "Now listen to me. I can help you. You're going to have a big wedding for your new wife. Ask the poorest people in town to your house, and ask your bride's father too." When the poor people arrive, tell the judge, "These people are all in my family. He doesn't want any poor people in his family. I'm sure of that." Fatima was right. When the judge met the poor people at Ali's house, he was very angry. I don't want my daughter to marry someone from this family," he cried. "Give her back at once." But I like her," said Ali. "You can have your ten thousand gold coins back," said the judge. "No, thank you," said Ali. "What about?" Twenty thousand gold coins, then," asked the judge. In the end, Ali took the twenty thousand gold coins and gave the young woman back to her father. The next day, Ali went to the blacksmith's house. "I want to marry your daughter," he said. "Oh yes." Said the blacksmith. But first, said Ali, can I see her? Perhaps you have more than one daughter. Fatima's father smiled. Fatima, he called. Please bring our visitor some coffee. When Fatima came in and saw Ali, she laughed. <laughs> Why are you here? She asked. I want to marry the right woman this time, he said. Now everybody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some of Fatima's coffee, said her father. King Marco lived in Italy. He had three daughters, and no sons. What's the matter? Asked Fantagiro, his youngest daughter, one day. 
It's this letter from King Luca of Randazzo, said her father. He wants to fight me and be king here, too. He's sending his army. What can I do? I'm old with no sons to fight for me. I can fight for you, his oldest daughter said. But armies don't like women generals, said King Marco. I can wear men's clothes, she said. And later that day, she left with the army. After some time, she saw some tall trees. Look! She cried. I can cook dinner for all the army with wood from only one of those trees. Cook? cried the man next to her. The general is a woman! Everyone laughed. <laughs> the oldest daughter went home at once, and the army came home behind her. The next day, the second sister left with the army. She said nothing when she saw the tall trees. Then they came to a river. Look, she cried. I can wash the dirtiest shirts in that river, and they're going to come out white again. Wash, cried the man next to her. This general is a woman, too. When his second daughter came back, King Marco said, Oh, no. I'm going to lose my country to King Luca. Don't forget me, said Fantagiro. Fantagiro didn't talk on the road. This general is quiet thought the man next to her. But he rides and carries his sword well. Soon, beautiful Fantagiro met King Luca and his army. Who are you? He asked her. I'm King Marco's general, she said. Shall we talk before we fight? All right, said Luca. But let's go to my palace. Fantagiro asked the man next to her, Tonino, to go with her. At his palace, Luca spoke to his mother. Perhaps King Marco's general is a woman, but how can I be sure? His mother said, Take him to the sword room. Women aren't interested in swords. But Fantagiro looked at the swords for hours. Then Luca's mother said, Take him into the garden and watch when he picks a flower. A woman puts a flower down the front of her dress. A man puts it behind his ear. But Fantagiro picked a yellow flower and put it behind her ear. What now? asked Luca. She's a woman, I'm sure. Look at her beautiful face. He loves the general, his mother thought. Ask him to have dinner with you she told Luca. A man breaks his bread with his hands. A woman cuts her bread with a knife. But Fantagiro broke her bread with her hands. After dinner, the queen said, It's a hot night. Ask him to swim with you. Two men can swim together happily. But a woman is going to say no. 
When Luca asked, Fantagiro said, Of course, I'd love to swim with you, but I'm tired and it's late. Let's do it tomorrow morning. And she went to her room. There, Fantagiro wrote a letter. She called to Nino and said, Take this letter and go to stay with our army tonight. Early tomorrow morning, come back and give me the letter. The next morning, Fantagiro met Luca. Let's swim now, he said. Wait, she said. I can hear a horse, and it's coming fast. Perhaps it's something important. Just then, Tonino arrived and gave her the letter. Fantagiro read it. Oh, no, she cried. My father's dying. I must leave. Let's talk tomorrow. And she rode away at once. Now, Luca's mother was sure. Fantagiro is a woman. Go after her and see what she does, she said to Luca. Fantagiro went home. She put on women's clothes and spoke with her father in the palace garden. Luca went after her and listened from behind a tree. Father, I must go back to King Luca's palace tomorrow, said Fantagiro. But he's very friendly now, and he isn't going to fight us. Then Luca came from behind the tree. You are a woman, he cried happily. I knew it. Please be my wife and queen. All right, said Fantagiro. And our two countries can be one without a fight. King Marco laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Sometimes daughters are better than sons, he said.